Hello, welcome back to Colonel O'Truth's Miniature Issues. In this episode, I'm tackling a piece that I'd looked forward to right from the beginning of building under Crag City, the aqueduct. It had always been my intention to have an aqueduct running through and above the city. And to this end, I had a mock-up ready, and I'd left space for it throughout the project. Now I'd reached the point where it was essential to finish the aqueduct and have it in place before I could finish everything else, because of things like hidden wiring inside the model. Using the mock-up as a guide, I started designing the final piece on 10mm thick foam. My intention was to create a detailed architectural form by laying progressively smaller sheets on top of each other. Check the first piece fits, and the rest should follow. At the back end of the aqueduct, it disappears into the mountainside. So I've built this to be quite chunky to help with building later whereas the columns have been laid on triple thickness now with the 10mm foam. The differing heights of the columns are dictated by the distance I wanted the top of each column from the ground beneath it. Now I'm cutting out the second and third layers. This is really quite a nice, easy way to work. The foam is 10 millimeters thick. The foam board is five millimeters thick. So it's pretty simple. Strip off the paper. Glue it all together. and a single flat piece running the full length of the aqueduct I'm going to use to model my water. Now I'm tidying up the end. This is an aqueduct into nowhere. It'll dump its waterfall into the river outside the east wall of the city. I'll put a link below for the episode where I made the river and the water gate. So here I'm modeling a slightly elaborate curve just to finish the end off nicely. Quick note on knife safety here. Don't do this. Now I'm using a ruler to draw in the lines that the stones will follow. This is, of course, at odds with the rest of Undercrag City, which is much more haphazard. Perhaps the aqueduct was built by a previous civilization and is much older than the rest of Undercrag. I feel that the straighter lines give a real sense of strength and bulk. It doesn't take long to start looking really nice. The odd scratch here and there, that'll just add to the character in the end. I'm modelling the top of the aqueduct with flagstones that will show through the water. Again, this is much more regular and precise than the rest of the city so far. And finally, some sides to keep the water in. These have been done in the same way as I do the battlements on the city walls. 
just strips of foam board cut into shape and stonework drawn in as normal. You can see I've deliberately worn some of the stones, some are missing. Here I'm removing one with the tip of a knife. This architecture was great in its day, but now it's old and worn. If you're enjoying these videos, please do subscribe, like and share, so you don't miss anything, and it'll help me reach a wider audience with these handy tips and tricks. You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram as Colonel O'Truth. Back to the model. I'm adding further weathering and moss with my usual EVA and sand technique here. Hiding any gaps and really roughing things up quite a lot. Then it's paint. This is the same stone as the city walls and the roads and streets. Dark grey, followed by a light grey dry brush. Very liberally. Then white. It really comes together quickly. Black ink wash followed by green and yellow while the black is wet. All techniques I've shown in other videos, but worth repeating. This really brings out the moss. Gives me lots of green and yellow tones over the grey. and now all the way along the channel. This has been underwater for probably hundreds of years. Bit of a mess. And now that the stonework is done, time to do the water. I'm taping some cling wrap to a hardback book to give it some support. Stop it wrinkling while I'm working with it. I'm painting it with Mod Podge. All in an up and down direction, not across. You can also see I've painted the channel of the aqueduct with the same Mod Podge. Quite a thick coat. And I'll let that dry. Shouldn't take long, maybe half an hour or so. A quick check of how it's looking. There's a couple of lines in there, but I'll deal with those later. Now this is thick acetate sheet. I've cut it to the same width as the aqueduct, and I'm laying it in straight over the wet Mod Podge. and applying more Mod Podge, this time waving and rippling it with the brush. Now I'm blowing across the surface with a straw. Try not to blow too hard as I don't want waves going up the sides of the aqueduct. A couple of loose stones there for a bit of detail. The cling wraps had several coats of Mod Podge now. Nice and thick, it'll hold its shape. I'm cutting a straight piece, wider than the waterfall needs to be. Cutting it like this gives it a sharp edge, so I'm going to fold the edges over. But I think that's going to look pretty good. Just playing around a bit, trying to find the best look. Now gently folding in the sides. 
It really sticks to itself. I don't need to add anything to make it stay. I'm trying to eliminate any horizontal or diagonal creases where I can with a bit of gentle stretching. Now that I'm happy with it, I'm going to glue it in place with Mod Podge. Glue it in place top and bottom. Give it a bit of a stretch to make sure it's falling straight. And building up froth at the bottom of the waterfall and at the top. This is all just texture of course, it will dry clear so I'm going to have to colour it later. Now I'm gently adding streaks and dabs of white paint to build up the foam. And here I'm using a worn out paintbrush. The splayed end gives an irregular effect. I'm mainly focusing on the top and the bottom of the waterfall, but a little bit in between. And then adding some color with green and yellow inks and a bit of black. I'll keep working over this. More Mod Podge. The Mod Podge dries clear, as I've mentioned, but so do the inks to some extent. They're translucent. The very vivid colours will eventually fade. More straw work. more white paint. By working in layers like this, you increase the feeling of depth in the water. So there we go, the aqueduct and the waterfall, all done. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, bye for now.